Compaq was once one of the most successful computer companies in the world. Founded in 1982 by Rod Canyon, Bill Murto, and Jim Harris, Compaq was known for producing high-quality IBM-compatible personal computers. Compaq quickly became a dominant force in the computer industry, but by the late 1990s, the company's fortunes had begun to decline. In this video, we will examine the rise and fall of Compaq, including the factors that led to its success and its eventual downfall. Chapter 1. The Early Days of Compaq the early days of Compaq were marked by the company's founder's vision and determination to create a new kind of computer company. Rod Canyon, Jim Harris, and Bill Murto left their jobs at Texas Instruments to start Compaq in 1982, with the goal of building a personal computer that was compatible with IBM's successful PC. At the time, IBM dominated the computer industry, and its PC was the most popular computer on the market. However, IBM had not licensed its technology to other companies, which meant that there was no standard for PC hardware and software. This made it difficult for software developers and hardware manufacturers to create products that would work across different brands of computers. Compaq's founders saw an opportunity to create a PC that was fully compatible with IBM's, but that could also be reverse-engineered and improved upon. They assembled a team of engineers and began working on the Compaq Portable, which would become the company's first product. The Compaq Portable was a huge success, thanks in large part to its compatibility with IBM's PC. It was the first portable computer to be fully IBM compatible, and it quickly became a popular choice for businesses and individuals alike. Compaq went on to become one of the fastest growing companies in the computer industry and its success helped to establish the PC as the dominant computing platform for decades to come. Chapter 2. Compaq's Success Compaq's success can be attributed to a few key factors. First and foremost, the company was able to create a product that was fully compatible with IBM's PC, which was the dominant computer on the market at the time. This compatibility made it easier for software developers and hardware manufacturers to create products that would work across different brands of computers, which in turn made the PC a more attractive option for consumers and businesses alike. In addition to its compatibility with IBM's PC, Compaq also had a reputation for producing high-quality products. The Compaq Portable, the company's first product, was built to last and was designed with the needs of business users in mind. This attention to detail and focus on quality helped to establish Compaq as a trusted brand in the computer industry. Compaq's success was also driven by its marketing and distribution strategies. The company was able to build a strong brand identity through its advertising campaigns, which emphasized the company's focus on innovation and compatibility. Compaq also invested heavily in its distribution channels, building a network of authorized dealers and resellers that helped to ensure that its products were widely available. Finally, Compaq's success was due in no small part to its leadership team. Rod Canyon, Jim Harris, and Bill Murto were all experienced executives who had worked at Texas Instruments before starting Compaq. They brought a wealth of knowledge and experience to the company, and their leadership helped to guide Compaq through its early years of rapid growth. Compaq's success can be attributed to a combination of factors, including its focus on compatibility, quality, marketing, distribution, and leadership. By creating a product that was fully IBM compatible, and by emphasizing quality and innovation, Compaq was able to establish itself as a major player in the computer industry and pave the way for the PC's dominance in the years to come. Chapter 3. The Fall of Compaq. Despite its early success, Compaq began to struggle in the late 1990s and early 2000s. One of the company's biggest challenges was the increasing competition in the PC market. As other companies began to enter the market and offer products at lower prices, Compaq found it difficult to maintain its market share and profitability. Another factor that contributed to Compaq's downfall was the company's acquisition of Digital Equipment Corporation DEC, in 1998. While the acquisition was intended to help Compaq expand into the enterprise computing market, 
it ultimately proved to be a costly and difficult integration process. The merger led to layoffs and a decline in morale among employees, and the combined company struggled to compete with other players in the enterprise market. Compaq also faced internal management issues that hindered its ability to respond to changing market conditions. In 1999, CEO Eckhard Pfeiffer was ousted after a series of disappointing financial results, and his replacement, Michael Capellas, faced ongoing challenges in turning the company around. Perhaps the biggest blow to Compaq came in 2001, when the company announced a merger with Hewlett Packard HP. While the merger was initially intended to help both companies compete more effectively in the PC and enterprise markets, it ultimately proved to be a difficult integration process that took a toll on both companies. Many analysts believe that the merger was a major factor in Compaq's decline, as the company struggled to maintain its focus and direction in the face of the merger's challenges. Ultimately, Compaq was acquired by HP in 2002, and the Compaq brand was eventually phased out. While the company had enjoyed early success as a pioneer in the PC industry, it ultimately struggled to keep pace with changing market conditions and maintain its position as a leader in the industry. The fall of Compaq serves as a cautionary tale for other companies in the tech industry, highlighting the importance of agility, focus, and strong leadership in a rapidly changing market. Chapter 4. The Acquisition by Hewlett Packard. The acquisition of Compaq by Hewlett Packard HP, was a controversial move that was met with skepticism by many industry analysts and investors. The merger was announced in September 2001, in the wake of the dot-com crash and just weeks before the September 11th terrorist attacks, which created a challenging economic climate for both companies. The merger was intended to create a stronger player in the PC and enterprise markets, with the combined company able to offer a broader range of products and services to customers. However, the merger faced significant opposition from some members of the HP Board of Directors, as well as from major shareholders, including the heirs of HP's founders. Despite this opposition, the merger was ultimately approved by HP shareholders in March 2002, and the combined company began operating as Hewlett Packard with Carly Fiorina as CEO. The merger created the world's largest technology company at the time, with over $80 billion in annual revenue. However, the integration of the two companies proved to be a difficult and costly process, with layoffs and other restructuring measures necessary to streamline operations and cut costs. The combined company also faced increasing competition in both the PC and enterprise markets and struggled to maintain its market share and profitability. Over time, the integration of Compaq into HP led to significant changes in the company's culture and strategy. HP became more focused on services and software, with less emphasis on hardware products such as PCs and printers. The Compaq brand was eventually phased out, and many of the company's former executives and employees left the company. While the acquisition of Compaq was a major strategic move for HP, it ultimately proved to be a challenging and controversial decision that had a significant impact on the company's future direction and performance. Chapter 5. Lessons to learn from the rise and fall of Compaq. There are several lessons that can be learned from the rise and fall of Compaq. Compaq's success was largely due to its innovative approach to developing new products and technologies. However, the company failed to continue this tradition of innovation in the face of increasing competition, which ultimately led to its decline. Compaq's success in the 1990s led to a sense of complacency among its leadership and employees. The company failed to adapt to changing market conditions and emerging technologies, which left it vulnerable to competition from newer and more nimble competitors. While the acquisition of Digital Equipment Corporation helped Compaq expand its product line and customer base, the subsequent merger with HP proved to be a difficult and costly process that ultimately failed to deliver the expected benefits. Compaq's success in the 1990s was largely due to its customer-centric approach to product development and sales. However, the company lost sight of this focus in the face of increasing competition and internal challenges, which ultimately led to its decline. 
Compaq's success in the 1990s was largely due to the vision and leadership of its founder, Rod Canyon. However, the company struggled to find a suitable successor after Canyon's departure, which contributed to its decline. Overall, the rise and fall of Compaq provides valuable lessons for companies and leaders in any industry. By focusing on innovation, avoiding complacency, prioritizing customer needs, and maintaining strong leadership, companies can avoid the pitfalls that led to Compaq's decline and position themselves for long-term success. By learning from Compaq's mistakes, companies can position themselves for long-term success and growth. Thank you for watching. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe and share.